Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So you're gonna get everything from your box that has to do with the kit, which is just this piece and your instructions, and then anything else you wanna add to it. I just grabbed a little bit of everything so that you would have plenty of ideas and you can be fully inspired. So we'll put this aside until we get to the grout part and I have everything needed for that. And we'll go ahead and open up the little packet. And then you can always save this for something you need later. Open up your bag. Get your little china pieces out. So the reason I got these was because um, the Gaelic Sea is the Northern Sea, which is the Scottish and Irish Ocean. And these are very similar to the um, antique china, the bone china that they have there. And the, uh, the Irish china, is known, I believe, as the Parian China, which is around 156 years old. That is the information that I was able to get. And that's around um, like white and green coloration. And uh, I saw a lot of clovers and pink flowers. So that's more like this design. And then the other one was the Scotch China, which um, was closer to like the Royal Warwick design. Um, there's a lot of different designs for that, um, the Scottish version, and that's more of the blue. So that's where the inspiration of that is. And then your mother of pearl shells um, have a really great representation too. They bring you intuitive and psychic abilities, uh, finance and prosperity, health and healing magic. So all of this brings you some great um, energy. And then you get little shells as well for ocean energy. And then your Celtic knot, which in whichever design you have, um, is an original pagan symbol. Um, so before Christianity came and took it um, around uh, 450 AD, it was a representation of infinity love, infinite nature of all living things in paganism. So that's why that's in there as well. It's a Celtic symbol. So um, I have some other things in here as well. So I've got some extra charms from the ritual. I have starfish. I have a little seahorse. I have a little sea turtle, some extra shells, and I have pearls and I thought it'd be fun to tell you about the pearl since this is in your oyster shell. So the pearl represents the moon. It's a talisman of wisdom and transformation. Um, and, and of course it's related to the cancer sign. And then I have a little baby hagstone I got um, that I retrieved from my sacred place at the ocean. And then I have other treasures I retrieved from the ocean, um, like this worn down barnacle shell. I think it's really pretty. Kind of reminds me of an eye, like the eye of a, a squid or an octopus. And then little seashells. And this one's a little sea snail. And then in here, I have a piece of frankincense which is the sun, fire, protection, spirit, exorcism. And then I have copal, which is sun, fire, love, purification. And then I have some herbs in here. And some of these are what came in your kit, such as the sea kelp and the Irish moss. And some of them are not, and they're things that I added, which are black cohosh root, elderflower, willow bark. And the black cohosh is for love, courage, protection, and strength. 
the elder flowers for protection uh, from entities for my home. And the willow bark represents the moon. It's the element of water. It protects um, the home and it represents divination, magic, love, and healing properties. And then um, if you didn't read your paper, which on your uh, C, uh, your Gaelic C recipe, it has the properties of the Irish moss and the sea kelp. The Irish moss represents the moon, water, money, luck, and protection. And sea kelp represents Jupiter, water, balance, protection, and prosperity. And Irish Mars is feminine and Jupiter is masculine. So you've got your yin and your yang, your balance there. And um, so all of that. So I was thinking about putting these within the tile, if they fit all right. And then mixing this in with the grout. I was gonna grind it with my mortar and pestle and then mix it in with the grout for all the protection magic because I'm planning on putting this tile in the planter in front of my house um, because this is going to be a home protection tile for my residents. So before we go into our house, we have you know that barrier um, magical barrier tile since we are all empathic and we all have some form of psychic abilities so we get a lot of uh, tag-alongs that like to try to come into our house and we don't like those so we want them to stay away yeah and then we've got Caribbean calcite um, so I have some pieces some leftover little chip pieces here and then I have quartz chips, little shards, and then I have kiwi jaspers. Have the little dots in them, which um, these are little tourmaline dots. So uh, Caribbean calcite elevates your abilities, your telepathic consciousness, so that I can see what's tagging along. Um, it's so it'll open up my third eye a bit more and enhance those psychic abilities. And then the quartz enhances everything, you know, all of these things. It's just like, you know, it makes it all way more magnified. And then the kiwi jasper is for relaxation and tranquility. So it just calms you down so you can just focus on all of this stuff. But yeah, it all works together in a cohesive way. And I doubt I can fit all of this on this little tile, but <laughs> we're gonna try. We're gonna try our best. We'll see how it all goes. And then I have my little bag of grout in oyster gray. So uh, the reason I have a pen is so that I can write on my tile. And you can either write something, you can carve on it, you can burn on it, um, or you can leave it blank. But I always like to obviously put a ton of meaning and magic and depth into everything because I'm dramatic no. <laughs> because I put intention into everything I make so um, we'll go ahead and get started as everything sticks properly and you can set out your design first so you know exactly what you're gonna do before you glue it all down um, I like to just kind of like freely go in and go for it um, but I'll show you how you can kind of like design first and maybe that'll help you a little bit better <laughs> so for one, you if you're gonna use this tile outside, like I am, 
you're not going to want to use anything that's fragile or cannot handle the elements of the outdoors. Um, so you're going to want to take that into consideration. You're also going to want to think about um, using items that are flat if you're going to want to put something on top of the, your tile. Um, so say you want to use it for your teacups or your cauldron or your chalice or <clears throat> whatever you want to lay on top. You want to make sure that anything that you put within it all lays flush so that whatever you put on top doesn't topple over. Um, also, if you're going to put like a hot cup of tea or something hot like a burning plate or something like that on top of it, make sure that anything that you put within your tile can handle heat. Like this will be able to handle heat. This is porcelain. These will be able to handle heat. Uh, the grout definitely handles heat. Um, but these, you know, I wouldn't put those in there. Any stones are going to be fine. Um, you wouldn't want to put resin because that's going to melt. Um, so anything wood, no, you wouldn't want to put that in there either. So anything that can handle um, a temperature, cold or hot, you could put in there and like I said, flush. So just think about science when you're going to um, design your tile as far as the elements goes and how you want to design it and how you want to use it. So let's see, how do I want to create this little baby? One to center. This might really aggravate people who are like all about symmetry. As you're designing it, you kind of want to use it like a puzzle, and fit the pieces like one quarter of an inch apart, because you're going to want to use that space for your grout. And then you can do something like this at the edge. I put this all the way to the end. You know, and you're gonna do like a little end piece of your grout. I have tiled before, I'll show you. I'll do an insert of one of the other mosaics I've done that's hanging in my bedroom.
you remember this little guy from a couple boxes ago? This was in the Winter Wolfen Time box. So I thought I would use this one. Let's grind it up. And get it a little bit more, less textural. These are wood pieces. I don't know how I'm gonna grind these for bad boys. These are little willow wood chips. Well, get back in there. of Aliyah red salt. No. parts are the wood chips, which yeah, I'm not going to be mortary and pestle and the wood. That's okay. I don't mind having a little bit of chunkies in there. And then we're going to mix it with the groat. Put the groat. And throw that in there. I thought it was so cool that I found oyster gray as a color. I was like, I gotta have that one. Oyster gray. It's meant to be. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cut this. So I made a knot. This is my magical scissors. Oh. Right. Open it up. Very gentle because it's very dusty. And then put it in. And like the directions say, you're gonna wanna use something disposable or something that you don't mind getting kind of messed up. This is a recycled, recycled bowl container that we can usually use for like lunches and stuff. So, and then I'll just rinse it out, recycle it. And then I have these wood, like, popsicle sticks, they're called, but, um, they're also called craft sticks, and you can get these at a craft store. Um, I have them because I am also a cosmetologist and I use them for waxing, but they're also for crafting. And I have two different sizes, um, and you can get them in any size you want. But sometimes it's easier to, you know, push the grout through with these smaller sizes. And then just the fatter size is easier for the mixing. But you don't have to be extra. Like, you just use whatever you can, whatever you have. You know, and if that's a butter knife, it's a butter knife. And if that's, a, you know, a spatula at home or a spoon, it's whatever you have you can use that you don't mind getting grout on. So I'm mixing in the herbs. This is just a step that you don't even have to worry about if you don't care about mixing in magical herbs into your grout. It's just a, 
another inspiration for you. I have no idea what it's gonna do to the texture of it, but we're gonna see how it's gonna go. Once we're ready. That should be good. So, and then I have my water ready to go for slow mixing. And I have gloves. Um, you don't need to have gloves if you don't have them or if you don't want them. It doesn't require them. Once you mix it and you pour it on, you can totally just use your tool to do everything. But I'm very hands-on, so I'm gonna be using gloves. And I know that if I don't, I'll get it all up and everything because I'm very um, tactile. And then um, you're gonna want either paper towels or an old sponge or something where you can like wipe off the grout afterwards, um, after 15 minutes. So we're gonna wait for this to dry fully and then we'll come back and mix the grout. Okay, everything's dry. So I'm gonna put some gloves in. Mm. Mm. And we're gonna mix up our grout. First you wanna start with about equal parts of grout and water. And you just want to do it slowly at first. Until it has like the consistency of peanut butter. can't really do exact measurements is because it always depends on where you live, like how hot it is um, near elevation or air altitude, humidity, all those factors. Oh man, and when you add sea kelp and Irish moss, it's gonna smell like the ocean or fish. <laughs> That's what it smells like right now. <laughs> like, oh man. It's an interesting smell. <laughs> it smells like the wharf. Hmm. Definitely like the galaxy. There we go. baby. And then we're gonna wait. Uh, we're gonna let it sit for like five, ten minutes and then we're going to mix it up again. So in about seven minutes, it's thickening up. And I'm gonna add some essential oils. So I'm adding clove oil for extra protection. And citrus bloom for happiness, joy. Oh, it smells so good. Mm. It's a great counteraction to the, um, that pungent sea kelp smell as well. The citrus especially. Just like with seafood, you know, you add citrus, cuts out the seafood smell. And I love clove. Clove smells so good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you wanted the consistency of creamy butter. So the creamy butter thick texture. I'm 
it should be a little bit thicker than this. This is a little bit thin for me. So I'm gonna let it sit just a little bit longer. Okay, okay so this is the consistency that you're gonna want. <clears throat> this is perfect. So once you've reached this consistency, this is perfect for what you want to do. Mix well. It just has that like nice thick butter subtle. I think this is just right. So <clears throat> just slowly add the water, mix it until it gets to a peanut butter consistency. Let it sit for five to 10 minutes, then mix it. And if it's too thick, you can slowly add more water, but you basically want it to be this thick. So it's, like I said, it depends on where you are. All right, <clears throat> so now we're going to add to our tile. And this is my work desk, so usually I would just, you know, put it on there. But I'm going to go ahead and put something down so it doesn't get all grouted up. I'm just going to push it into the cracks. And then that will help me, like, so I don't have, like, a lot to take off with the sponge. All the way down into the cracks of all your little bubbles and you want to push it in all of your little cracks of your medallion too you want to grab in between all of those little knots and scrape it down So we're going to wet the sponge. And get off anything that we don't want on our tile. Yeah. Cleans up nicely. And I waited the full 30 minutes for it to dry. Especially since I put um, essential oils in the mix. 
didn't know how that was gonna affect it, so I'm glad I waited. And you don't want it to be too wet, but you don't want it to be too dry either. Because there's uh, so much thick corrode in between all of this, that's why you don't want it to be too wet. on the other side. So, to do that, I already have the papers ready. I wanted to show you how you can do it. You can draw or write whatever you want. And then I have my Mod Podge. So, you're going to glue everything down. First, and I already have my paper cut out. My design, and then you put it on the other side, and you glaze it. Give it a good seal all the way to the ends. have stickers but you can add you know papers to this because this is glue as well or dried flowers or anything else you want
looking glazed part. This very sounds fine to me. It's very potent, very strong. Uh, when I was doing all the um, the shells, I had to wear gloves and protective um, mask. I could not breathe this. This is very, very strong. harmful fumes but since I'm just doing a quick little job right now I'll, I'll do it quickly <laughs> it's very strong <laughs> stuff so don't have any candles or anything burning if you ever use this. dries and I scrub it down, I'll show you the finished product. <laughs> 